What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits. Inside of this video, we're gonna do a quick tutorial for you just walking through this week's free raw photos. So if you wanna download these and edit along, you can head to signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos and we'll get started together. Let's hit that intro and get into it. All right, so time is of the essence today because I have to get going. However, I have a couple minutes just to sit down and do a couple of edits with you. So I'm going to show you basically my editing process and then I'm going to show you how I do it if I weren't using presets. Fair enough. So typically I'm always using presets because what they do is save time. It doesn't make your photos magically better. It doesn't magically fix what's going on in them, but it gives you a starting point and you can get to your look a lot faster. So if you look through these presets that I've got, which is just the signature edits clean um, and natural presets, I'll leave a link in the description if you like them. You can see I've got some tone curves going on. I've got all of my adjustments here in my main panel. And most of all, I have a custom profile built in here. And so I've spent hours and hours and hours dialing these in to make sure that they're really subtle. They keep the colors the way they're supposed to. They do exactly what I want them to do. And so that's why I use presets. It's not because I can't edit the photos or because the photos look better because they have presets. It's because it just saves time. So just, you know, that's why you buy presets to save time and get to the look faster, not because they're magically going to fix your photos. Anyways, that's enough of a tangent. Let's actually start editing. So I would generally just go in here. I've got like four or five looks. I feel like the warm look with this is much better. So I kind of like that sort of moody-ish dark green. So what I'm gonna do is take the exposure up, take the highlights down. I'm probably gonna take the shadows up a little bit and then we're just going to dial it in, kind of get that moodiness going on. I'm gonna grab a radial filter up here, like so, put it right here. And I'm just gonna enhance kind of the fogginess of what's going on in this photo. So we're gonna add some dehaze, clarity down, texture down, good contrast down and then make it brighter. We're basically making our own beautiful little sun flare. And of course you can dial it in. That might be a little bit too soft. So we can take our clarity back up maybe or our dehaze back up. Take the exposure up, brighten everything, or sorry, <laughs> darken everything down with my plus and minus keys here. And it's still feeling way too soft. I don't know what's going on here. We will try taking this sharpness up, dehaze down. Something like that. So it really just adds a bit more of an effect. If I have everything dark, it just feels dark. But like this, now all of a sudden it's kind of like a mood, right? And of course, if you want to get the same kind of look, all you're going to do is reset the entire photo. We're going to warm it up. I'm not going to do the adjustment brush stuff because that would be exactly the same, but I'm more or less just going to take highlights down, shadows up, blacks down a little bit. Go to my tone curve. A little bit of an S curve here. Crush the blacks. Okay. Cool it down. Go down to my calibration. Make it a little bit more green. Reds can go probably this way, desaturate. Greens, let's take them towards yellow. And blues, let's play around and see what we like. Probably something like that. Okay, so that's two different ways. If we jump over here to my history, you can see, here's before, here's the preset version, and here is the without a preset version. Okay. Now, obviously, you still need to add that radio filter in there to get it exactly the same, but that's more or less how I'd go about doing it. Now, obviously, that was super fast, like mind-blowingly just going really fast here because I have somewhere to be. Um, if you do need to slow this down, you can go ahead, slow down the video playback by hitting shift and the little backwards slash or the comma key on your keyboard. That'll slow things down. Anyways, this photo, let's go through. Same process. I'm going to open up my clean presets from the clean and natural preset pack. You can see, like, I absolutely love this photo by Richard Nui Suzivli. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I don't know how to see your name. Um, but you can see that every preset just looks amazing. And it's not because the presets are amazing, which I still think they are, but it's mostly because the photo is amazing. Like, you can literally put any presets you want on here, and it's probably going to look amazing simply because the photo has such nice exposure. There's no like blown out highlights. Everything is really beautiful. The lighting is nice. The colors are nice. So that's really what I need to get across. Like I don't have any preset on this right now. If I just add a little tone curve here, that is absolutely horrendous because I went way too hard. <laughs> My point is like I can almost do anything and the photo's just going to keep looking good. And like that's the real secret. As you watch different guys, different girls, photographers out there, and they edit their photos, like literally, you'll be like, oh, they just did like this. They had a little contrast, lowered the blacks a little bit, maybe took the highlights down. 
dialed in their white balance and they were done. Like, what is that? And the photo looks almost exactly the same as when they took it. So like, <laughs> you'd be amazed at how many photographers out there, they're not like pro editors who know how to edit in a way that you can't edit whatsoever. It's not like that. There's no amazing secret other than they're just amazing at taking better photos than you. Probably they get up earlier or they're shooting later when the light is much nicer. They're making sure they're getting their composition really, really right. All the exposure is right. All of the framing is right. All the colors and the color scheme and everything about that photo in camera is beautiful. And so it is very easy to just like click it and be like, oh, okay, that looks good. Let's maybe adjust the, uh, <laughs> the exposure a little bit, dial back our highlights and we're good. Okay, let's move on. All right, we've got a brand new beautiful photo from at Lauren Larson, Ryan Photography. So let's just add a little preset. I'm feeling kind of moody today. So let's go with this more like moody-ish vibey photo. We're going to get rid of those adjustment layers. I'm going to take my highlights down and my exposure up and just see. Like we could go for something kind of more HDR feeling. Like almost make it feel sort of video game-like. So we'll raise our blacks. I'm going to take my clarity up like that. And that, my friends, is what I would call like the Peter McKinnon edit. <laughs> I don't know. He he has a, a way of editing photos that is actually pretty cool. Um, but I feel like that is sort of his vibe as he sort of takes his clarity up. He's definitely not afraid of like making the photo look, let's say like less realistic, a little bit more edited, like that's cool and vibey. Um, so this is again, without doing the preset, I'm literally just going to add a little bit of a tone curve, probably clip those whites down a little bit. And if the tone curve is confusing AF to you, just go ahead, watch my tutorial elsewhere on the channel. Okay, so there's like my version of it in two seconds without a preset. And of course, you can go in here, adjust your calibration. Again, if calibration is confusing to you, go ahead. I have another video elsewhere on the channel. You can check it out. We're just going to get it looking vibey, see what we like. I'm thinking somewhere around there. So there's before, there's after. Bam, the Peter McKinnon. <laughs> oh, boy. I love you, Peter. I think you're an awesome editor. You're better than me. Okay, so let's take that exposure up. This one we're going to deal with directly. Just like that. So here's before and here's after. Look how much you can add without any preset, without any fanciness, just the top panel. Like I'd almost encourage you, challenge you, maybe try editing a few photos and limit yourself to using just one tool. Like, okay, how can I edit this photo with just the tone curve? So let's go in here. We're going to get our nice adjustment. So already, like, look at that. One tool. Everything else is empty. Now we can go in, we can play around with our like reds. Probably we'll take reds out of the sky and we'll add a little bit back in our midtones. Now here's where you're going to see where I'm really like not a pro when it comes to the tone curve. Got to be real. I sometimes get confused by it. Everybody does. It's a thing. Okay, let's go for like more of a vintage vibe. We'll make our shadows really like reddish magenta and we'll also add some more yellows to the shadows. Kind of like that. So here's before and here's after. Look how much you can do with just the tone curve. So I'd encourage you. Play around. Don't feel like you need to use every panel in here or that you need all the presets to be able to make it magical. Like, honestly, as you go through these presets, some of them work pretty good. Like, I really like that one. I think it's cool. But compared to what I had two seconds ago, let's go down my history here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I sort of like this more. And that only used the tone curve. No fancy presets required. By the way, if you like these presets, you can download a sample. I'll leave it in the description of the video. My gift to you, good sir, madame. Okay. This one, you can see a massive difference between this photo and the other ones because this photo, the exposure is not like as dialed in. So our subject is very, very dark compared to the rest of the background. So I feel like I just want to brighten him up. We're going to do whatever it takes. Doo -doo -doo. And then I'm going to darken everything down. And by the way, you can do this with the plus and minus keys on your keyboard and hold shift if you want to make it happen even faster. Okay, so now we got our basic exposure dialed in. See how much, like, all of a sudden we can actually see our subject. It's not like we're losing him on the background. I'm going to go down to my tone curve. It's literally almost the exact same thing every time. You just add a little bit of an S curve. <laughs> That's what that shape is, kind of. See? S. Okay. It's been a long day. Bear with me. Okay, so I'm going to do kind of something similar. We're going to add some yellows to the shadows. Maybe even... Add some greens to the shadows. Let's go, let's go crazy. Let's be wild and dangerous today. Okay, good. I'm gonna take my black point down a little bit, white point up a little bit, not that far. And if you're ever wondering if you've gone too far, you can hit the J key on your keyboard and it will show and hide uh, whether you're clipping or not in your image. 
So as you can see, I kind of was, so we're going to pull that back. And then, yeah, let's make it full on vintage. We'll take our whites way down like that. We'll take our blacks way up like that. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> Just kidding. Somewhere around there. Okay. And then because this is a portrait, obviously we could go in, we could fix some skin blemishes. We could add a little bit of texture to his hair. Just hit K on your keyboard. You'll get to your brush. My hair. My hair, my hair, my hair. Okay. Something like that. If you ever want to make hair thicker, like especially a beard, watch this. Okay. You grab an adjustment brush. Go on like this spot you want to be thicker. Literally, you just take your contrast up. Hair gets thicker. Isn't it magical? It's like beard replacement. So once in a while, if you have a guy whose hair is thinning in one spot, easy trick for you. Okay, so before, after, right? And here's the preset version. Hopefully this is helpful in some way, shape, or form. I was like, oh, I feel like it would be kind of cool to see the difference between editing with presets and editing without. So like without, obviously, it's one click and I get to here. Then you have to adjust your exposure, obviously. Adjust your white balance. Like you can't get away from that. That's going to be part of the game no matter what. We're going to add our same radial gradient. So it's like, I can do the same thing, just get there faster, and it's going to be slightly different because these are like looks I've dialed in over an extended period of time. So theoretically, I should be able to get the look I'm going for like quicker. So it just depends what you like. Okay, let's move on. This one. Now, first thing you're going to see, if I add a preset, it's going to look like not garbage, but just not really that good. Why? Because the white balance isn't right. Just grab your temperature. Okay, maybe add a little saturation because we're on the beach. Tropical vibes, I feel like it should be saturated. That's before and after, okay? Same thing without a preset. Warmth, bam. Tone curve. Maybe I should call this video speed edits, and that'll be a whole thing. We'll like just go through videos together, and we'll see how fast we can edit things. Okay, somewhere around there. Okay, there's just your standard, basic, whatever, beach vibe. Beach vibe, beach vape. Vabe, babe, you know. Okay, I'm going to save some time here. We're going to just copy that and paste it. That's with Command-C and Command-V on my Mac. And then because her head area, I just realized I'm pointing, but I don't have a camera on today. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Because her head area is darker than the rest of the photo, we're just going to brighten it up very slightly. I like to raise the exposure, but also lower the contrast. See how that brightens things up? So contrast down and then maybe blacks down a little bit. She be popping. Okay, before... After. Now you might say, that's way too warm. That's cool. You do you. I don't really care. Right? What other things could we do? We could go down to our HSL. We could be really creative. We could take our greens down. Oh, yeah. Take our yellows down. Oh, yeah. Take our hue and be like, okay, I just have no idea what I'm doing. I'm going to see what works. Okay. We're going to make this blue super ice blue. Ice. Okay. There's before. There's after. I mean, can't go wrong when you got a great photo from at Ollie Jr. Photographia. Photographia. <laughs> Anyways, my point being, when the exposure is nice, when the white balance isn't that far out, when everything is like in the photo, in the camera, <laughs> life is so much easier. And whenever you're editing, like it's not that hard to get things right, right? See these presets? Bam, 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 right? And it's not because the preset is magical. Like I think they're magical because they're mine and I like them. But that's not the point. The point is that it looks beautiful no matter what you do. Okay, this one, kind of different. You can see that we've got some like blown out highlights in the background. And so our presets don't look as instantly magical, but they still look okay. First, I'm going to get rid of these things, some kind of a light pole or something in here. We'll just get rid, bam. And these cars, super ugly. Let's get rid of them <laughs> by replacing it with another car, obviously. Something like that. And one more, something like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we're going to just crop in because our lovely model should be filling the frame a little bit more. Cool, like that. And I don't know, it just depends what you want to do. What do you feel? What is your feeling? I'm feeling like black and white is the way this photo is just, just going. I'm going to sharpen it up a little bit with some, some texture and some dehaze. I personally like going really hard on my black and whites. So that's just me. So we're going to crush those blacks, go down to our effects. And if you ever want to make something look super vibey, just add grain, full size, full roughness, full amount. Bam. Does it get better than that? Answer, yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> Dial it in. I like to add quite a bit of grain. And there you go. Before, 
after. Okay, moving on. We got so many photos to do. I might not even do them all. I might just leave some for you. And you can tag me at Signature Edits Co. And I can see what you're all about. Okay, we're going to brighten it up. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Like that's the difference with the preset versus doing it by hand. I have to come in here, take my white balance up like a so. Just like that. Okay. And we're kind of getting the same vibe, but it's a little different. And then, of course, we're going to come down to our HSL. And that's just like the only thing different about using not a preset versus having a preset. The preset just saves you some time. It's already gone in and finicked around with these things on 100 different photos to make sure it's consistent. And especially when you're editing lots of images in the same set, like with a one-off, yeah, sure, edit it like this. But if you're editing 500 photos, then a preset becomes very handy because it's made to work across a lot of different situations and weather conditions, whatever. Okay, so what am I doing right now? I basically am just brushing on her skin. Any areas that I don't need to preserve details, we can go over and we're going to smooth them out. As you can see, that's like so natural. You would never even guess it's been edited. <laughs> I really hope you can tell I'm kidding here. But I find it easier to do this and then dial it back versus... It's just easier to see. See what I'm doing. Okay, like that. So now we'll dial it back to what we can get away with, which is probably going to be more like there. Here's before, here's after. Look at that. I'm a magician. I should get paid. Real actual dollars or crypto or both. Okay, one more. Let's just adjust her hand white balance because her hands just remind me of the witch in Snow White. Not because of her, just because of, you know, the situation. we got some weird white balanciness going on. They're too blue. If we warm them up and maybe add some magenta, I feel like they'll feel more natural and alive versus right now they feel kind of dead. Okay, so here's before, here's after. Okay, good. Before, after, before, after. Cool. All right, let's grab a preset. By now you know the drill, so I'm going to just start that as a starting point. However, if you're not using a preset, that's cool. It's all right. I'll forgive you. All you have to do is make an S-curve, and then you're pretty much 90% of the way there, okay? So just play around with that. Hopefully by now you get the gist of it. So we're just going to find a preset that I like the vibe of because I want to get you ready to edit rather than watching me edit. I'm going to warm that up. We're going to go with like a, a Liverpool vibe. I don't know what that means, but this is it. <laughs> Before and after. Um, really, really warm, adding some green to the shadows intentionally. So sometimes you don't have to use white balance in the way that like is totally correct. You can use it stylistically, right? So we can add some more green and make our photo feel more vintagey. So that's like going farther than it should be, but I actually kind of like the look. I like the feel and that's okay. So do you need a preset for this look? Of course not. You do the same thing. We're going to take our little tone curve, take our highlights down, shadows up a bit, maybe blacks down and warm it up slightly. We're going to green it down slightly and it's not quite the same, but that's okay. You just Keep fiddling around until you get what you want. Life is good. Okay, this one. I don't know what to say about this. I feel like we're in a commercial for, I don't know. What do you think she's selling? Leave it in the comments below. Um, first off, I'm going to take the luminance of the blues down and add a little saturation because I want those blues to be popping, 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 popping. Okay, somewhere around there. I'm in a mood. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm going to add a little exposure, highlights down a little bit, do some beautiful tone curveness. And I don't know, I mean, we could do a cool thing. We just clip this like that, clip this like that, and then we're like super vintage. Let's go like super hardcore Polaroid vintage. So we're going to take our whites and like clip the crap out of them. Blacks, we're going to clip the goodness out of them. Take our grain all the way up, size all the way up, roughness all the way up. Take it back, take it back. Okay, cool. And then we're going to take our highlights down because we've clipped that and I don't like it. Take our texture down maybe. Okay, there we go. Now we got like a vintage soup label. Easy. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Okay, let's take this one. First, we're going to just adjust the exposure where it should be. White balance looks pretty good. Might need to warm it up a little. And you can see that although these presets are doing okay, the problem is that this guy in this particular photo, kind of blown out. So the preset just sort of enhances what's already going on. So what I'm going to need to do, obviously, take our exposure down to where it should be for the sky. And then I can go up here to my select sky, take the exposure down in the sky, take the exposure up overall, and bam, we have our sky back. Now when it comes to the actual sky mask, which I can get up to again and hopefully edit, 
I'm going to take the contrast down and the highlights down. And then I'm going to smooth it out. I don't actually need it to be clear, and hopefully that'll get rid of some of this weird banding that's going on. And of course, you can't take it down too far. It'll feel weird. So somewhere on there, probably. These hot air balloons are really giving me trouble. And then we'll try and split the difference by making our subject a little brighter. So select subject. OK, that might work. Yes. Warm her up slightly. And I'm going to take the saturation on my subject down. Why? Because the rest of the image feels too desaturated. So by doing that, I can add saturation everywhere. And hopefully things will blend. And sometimes what happens when you're doing an edit like this is you're editing and you're trying to do it fast and then it's just a mess. Like that does not look good. <laughs> so this is going to be an example of I'm going to put in black and white because just being real with you, just leveling. If I actually am editing a photo, like let's say it's a wedding, it's not a super important photo, um, but I still want it in there because it's a nice one, I'm going to put in black and white. Not because I don't care, but because honestly, it just looks better and it feels better and I, for whatever reason, can't figure out the color. Like, I'm a human being. I mess up. I don't always have the answers for you. Hopefully, I have some stuff to point you in the right direction. So again, here's another example of the difference between a nice dynamic range, the camera can capture everything, all the presets just work. Everything just looks pretty good. Or go without the presets. I don't care. You do you. Let's do it without the presets. We're going to take our reds down. Okay? Not that far because that's weird. We're going to take our hue over. I don't know why they had her sit in like such an extremely bright pink shirt, but we're going to roll with it. We're going to embrace the pink. We're going to darken it down so we get like so much vibrance, you don't even know what the word vibrance means. Okay? Sure, something like that. Then the background, I really want to pop. So I'm going to go with select subject, not select sky. <laughs> Let's undo that. Let's select subject. Okay, that was woefully inadequate. <laughs> Let's try and make this panel a little bigger. We're going to go to my weird select subject. We're going to go subtract with brush. And there you go, Lightroom. That's how life works. Okay, so we got our subject here. We're going to invert it. Hit these three little things. There's no invert option. Let's try it here. <laughs> invert. Okay. Are you serious? Did that really just happen? Let's try this again. Let's uninvert. <laughs> We're just going to hit the apostrophe key on our keyboard. That's not going to work. Oh, come now. Try this. Okay, so you have to select the right area. And of course, I'm going to have to add with a brush this area that Lightroom mixed, missed. So 10 minutes later, we finally have our background selected. I'm going to take the exposure of it up. Texture. Clarity. Yes, this is way too hard. We're going to take it back down in a second. Dehaze. Okay. Something like that. Okay. Is that beautiful? I don't know. You tell me. Is that your thing? Maybe. Maybe not. Whatever. It's cool. I don't care. Take the clarity down a little bit. Take the dehaze up a bit. There. That's where I've settled. I don't know why. That's just me. That's me today. <laughs> so hopefully... Hopefully somewhere in here, between all of these different photos and edits, you got some tips that were actually useful to you. If you did, please leave them below. Like, what was the number one thing you gained from this video, and how are you applying it? I would love to see and hear and have a connection. Uh, but most of all, let's have a conversation, because that, I think, is the most helpful thing as creatives. We can be so isolated, looking at our computers by ourselves, having the chance to actually connect is really cool. So leave that in the comments below. Hit that like button if you appreciate this content and make sure to subscribe if you want to stay connected for future videos. All right, I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.